How do we think about an equilibrium in a market like this? Well, the simple way to think about the equilibrium in a market like this is to think about four equations that have to be satisfied in equilibrium. That is, our market clearing is now consists of really four equations. Number one, the quantity at date t has to be equal to the amount demanded at today's rental price, right? That is market clearing. This is the use market equilibrium. Number two, I have to have today's price be the discounted value of future rent. You could think about that as some kind of efficient market view of the world. That the, that the current capital price of these assets has to be equal to what people expect to happen in the future. Now, in my model right now, I don't have any uncertainty, so the price today is just going to be equal to the discounted value of all those future rents. If we want to add some uncertainty, then we're going to have to make this some kind of expectation and all the rest. But think about the certainty case, easy. The today's price got to be some discounted value of future rents. Okay. Equation three, the amount we build today, the amount of these assets we produce, then depends on the capital price. And number three, number four, the amount of assets we have today equals one minus delta kt minus one plus it. Those are really the four equations we have. And it's nice that we have four equations because we got four unknowns. We got I, K, P, and R. Right? Now, but it's actually worse than having four unknowns because we actually have four unknowns at each date. Right? We got a bunch of R's, a bunch of P's, a bunch of K's, a bunch of I's. Right? Running forward and backwards in time. Now, you know, the past kind of doesn't matter too much because it's all in K. That's all I need to know about the past. But the future, I still got to worry about what the future. The future is all endogenous in this world. Yeah? So we what we're going to call Sure. Absolutely. It's not, it doesn't be a, that's a distinction between what we call a steady state and an equilibrium. That is, we're going to look in a bit and what we'd call a steady state. That's a world with a constant capital stock. It's not necessary to have, quote, an equilibrium. That's, you might think of that as some long-run equilibrium in some sense, but it's perfectly fine to have a growing capital stock. That's measured by delta. Well, it is, because I, delta is exogenous in my model. I'm not assuming that people get to choose delta. Now, you could make them choose delta. They could, you know, for example, you could have some cost of choosing delta, right? Then, and how would you model that? Well, they, you could say, well, I want to maximize the value of my asset over delta, which would be max over delta of what, what would it be? It would be PT plus 1 times, let's say I had one unit of asset, times 1 minus delta over 1 plus R. That's what that asset's going to be worth, right? Minus C of delta, if that's how much I have to, in, that's the cost to me of investing to reduce depreciation. This is called maintenance, right? This is, this is like a model of maintenance. So if I could choose the level of maintenance to affect delta, I would choose this to get a delta star, okay? And you could endogenize delta then. 
you could say, well, the amount of depreciation is going to depend on P. Because the higher P is, the more, the more I'm going to want to maintain the capital stock. Now, you, one thing you can do is think about that. Now, this is PT plus 1. So this is, this is like assuming, this is like a form of investment, right? That is, I can invest, and so you can kind of add that back into I. You can add yesterday's maintenance a part of today's investment, right? Because there's two ways to get more capital tomorrow. One is to produce new capital for tomorrow. The other is to maintain your old capital for tomorrow. So you can just add it into this investment function, okay? So you can do that. 